Well, let's just kind of jump into it. Week seven, uh, obviously, it's a college football week, so a lot happened. Um, we'll just kind of run through a bunch of the scores, and we'll stop and talk about the games that we find interesting. So if we start Thursday night, there was a game, Houston beats West Virginia 41-39. to Just kind of a bananas ending. I mentioned it just for the ending. West Virginia scores a, the go-ahead touchdown with like 14 seconds left, and then Houston completes a Hail Mary at the buzzer, and, and they win the game. Um, I, I, heard, I saw somebody say that uh, – Neil Brown saved his own job and Dana Holgerson's job this year. So good job by him. Hmm. Neil Brown. Can we just, just give him, I know they lost this game on a Hail Mary. You know, that is what it is. They fell to four and two, like, right. Just, <laughs> uh, yeah. Just pour one out real quick um, for that West Virginia program. They have done incredible work this year. Houston also really needed this one. Like, like there yeah. was no doubt that Holgerson was feeling the heat. So yeah, he's off the hot seat as well. So I, I agree with that one, actually. Yeah, there's there's <laughs> Neil Brown got two guys off the hot seat. <laughs> uh, speaking of great endings, Stanford beats Colorado on Friday night, 46 to 43 in in uh, yeah. double overtime. Uh, 29 point comeback. I I was not watching this. I was already in bed. Um, wow. Saw it all Saturday morning, though, when I woke up. <laughs> I was going to say you live in Colorado. Like, how do you how are you not? tuned into this one i was actually in ohio this weekend which uh-huh. is a whole different story um because mm. saturday night i was watching notre dame usc with my cousins who are rabid ohio state fans ah. since they're rooting for undefeated teams to lose they were rooting for notre dame and that was very unsettling for me but hey uh-huh. it worked out i got gotcha. you <laughs> do, do we want to talk can we just spend just just a minute on this colorado stanford game because that game was 29 yes. nothing um at halftime like can we can we talk just a little bit about what like the, the defensive collapse? And I am not here to dance on the graves of Colorado. It's not what I'm doing <laughs> at all. But I am saying it was, I mean, okay, Colorado was out there. They went ahead and, and beat their chest. You know, they had a three and zero start. You know, great. We, you know, we get it. Like Stanford's not good. Stanford is not a very no. good football team. And in the second half, you could not stop them. It's concerning. Like, that's concerning. And by the way, Stanford, it's not like usually if, if Stanford would have beat Colorado, it's because they ran for, you know, 350 yards or something and put up a boatload of points. They threw the ball on them. They yeah. threw the ball all over them. I, 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 Yeah, I only caught bits and pieces of it. I also wasn't able to watch the whole thing. I, I – I'm not sure. Like Colorado is what it is. I think at this point, their defense is not very good. Stanford's not a good football team and they lost Colorado's schedule is really tough. The remaining schedule is not a cakewalk at all. Like, I mean, they're, they're probably going to be an underdog in every single remaining game. Yeah, I mean, it's possible. Real, realistically, they're probably going to be an underdog in their last five games. So yeah, I, anything, anything I'm missing there? No, I, I think, I think Troy Taylor is actually a pretty good offensive coach, the Stanford hire there. And obviously they're a long ways away from being good again, but Colorado has serious weaknesses. They have serious weaknesses, especially on their defense and also with their offensive line. And a good coach is able to adjust to that and figure out how to beat them. So that's probably an oversimplification, but to me, it felt like, just watching the bit that I watched extended highlights, not, not, not every snap, but extended highlights. It seemed like Colorado wore down and Stanford was able to figure out how to finally stop them because their offensive line is not very good. And they also figured out these corners are tired and they're all also yeah. not that great. Uh, Travis Hunter's playing 958 snaps in this game. And like props to Elik a Menor. Ayo Manor, yeah. I don't know how to say well it, done. the Stanford receiver. Well Zero mm-hmm. catches at halftime, and he finishes with 295 yards and three touchdowns. Um, yeah. Just, okay, the, yeah. the catch that he had in overtime, just yes. the mossing. Okay, now we think that Travis Hunter, for all of Colorado's shortcomings, Travis Hunter's a really good cornerback. Um, yes. And, and he straight up got mossed by this guy from Stanford. I mean, that was an incredible catch. One of the best ones. Going to be a catch of the year candidate, for sure. Um, at the end of the year. Yeah. I, again, nothing but positive things to say for Stanford. Well done um, to them. And on the Colorado side, I think maybe it does show just a little bit about how like the recruiting does still matter. Like, I don't think in the portal, they've been able to find the depth that they needed. And like, you're seeing it, you're, you're off to a great start coming out of the gates and then guys are starting to get hurt, nicked up. Depth becomes a problem for them. 
And I, yeah, I think it's going to, to to kind of run its course a little bit in the second half of this season. I think they've got a lot of tough games coming up still. They really do. They <laughs> they need two more wins to make a bowl, and they only play two more games against teams that aren't ranked. That's Arizona, who's pretty good right now, and Washington State, who has yeah. been good at points this year. So, yeah, yeah. it's going to be difficult. It, also, I've heard just some, just just some whispers out there of maybe some of the Colorado players not handling this all that well. So. Oh, just something to keep an eye on. Who could have predicted that? Who could have right. saw that one coming? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get into Saturday. Um, just kind of run down through the games. Uh, Michigan stomps Indiana 52-7. to Iowa State beats Cincinnati 30-10. to That's something yeah. to keep an eye on. They're figuring it out, apparently. Florida State beats Syracuse 41-3. to And this is this was emblematic of the entire, like, noon slate. There was very little of competitive football going on. It was a lot of right. – Beatdowns, including Ohio State beating Purdue 41 to 7. One that was maybe unexpected, Rutgers beats Michigan State 27 24. I'm not saying I like a lot of people would have expected it. I also saw a lot of people like, oh, smart money, and maybe take Michigan State this week. But Rutgers pulls uh-huh. out the win there and they're five and two. So pretty impressive. Alabama sneaks one by Arkansas. This is one of the competitive games the news. Yeah. 24 to 21 to improve to six and one. Arkansas falls to two and five, but Alabama was up, but then yeah, they did they score the second half. Like this was this was not. They perfect. got a field goal. Yeah, they got a field goal. That was a it. Field goal. No, yeah. yeah, no, I agree. Um, Arkansas also shows fight. Arkansas is a good team. I know that they're two and five. Arkansas is a. They've been sneaky competitive, not with just with Alabama, by the way. Um, LSU as well. Uh, they like, like Arkansas would play a three point game against a, a lot of really good teams out there. So yeah, yeah, I. Just kind of to give them their flowers. I think Alabama is still a good football team. I, I thought Arkansas is actually decent. I think KJ Jefferson yeah. is really impressive. I I still don't think that he gets the love that he deserves. I think KJ is an excellent quarterback. And if he was in a different place, I think we talk about him a lot differently. Say like say if him and Bo Nix swapped places and suddenly KJ's at Oregon. Like I think he's you know I think he could do kind of what 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 Nix is doing there. So yeah, I I'm a big KJ Jefferson guy. I think. Arkansas, unfortunate to be two and five. I think they're pretty solid. Tell me they wouldn't be the fourth best team in the Big Ten right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> so they what they need to beat what Maryland and Iowa. Um, I mean, truthfully, they'd be favored against Iowa probably tomorrow. Like if Definitely. you think about it, like from a, from from that standpoint, and Maryland. I mean, with with Tagovailoa, like he's he's sometimes great and then sometimes he's not. You're never always sure. Um. um yeah, no, I'm I'm not going to be able to tell you that they wouldn't be favorite or the fourth best team um, in in the Big Ten. That that one's kind of up for debate right now. Yeah. All right. Georgia beats Vanderbilt thirty-seven to twenty. Not the not the dominant win that you might have expected, but also never one that was worth really paying attention to, quite frankly. So, right. Yeah. Uh, the news there, Brock Bowers um, had surgery yeah. today. Um, and he had, it's the same, it's like, the, they call it like that little tightrope surgery. It's the same surgery that Tua had. I don't know if you remember in, in, um, in 2019, I believe. Yeah. Um, in the 2019 season, he, he got that. I, I, I mean, okay. Back Brock Bowers championship game, right? <laughs> well, may, maybe, maybe I think Georgia's schedule is actually tougher than what people um kind of believe they have a bye week but then they have Florida um, which is a neutral site game. Then Missouri, um, who's Missouri's a good football team right now. Follow Missouri follows the next week. Um, Ole Miss comes into town. Ole Miss is, I mean, whether you like them or not, they're they win a lot of games, right? Like that Tulane win keeps impressing. Um, Tulane's now ranked again. So, and then and then and then it's at Tennessee. Like it's a tough stretch. Like those four games are are difficult. And yeah, it's not maybe ideal <laughs> at all. I think Georgia and. In some ways, Georgia, this could make Georgia have a higher ceiling because they have to develop some other guys. Brock Bowers is a stud. And I think Brock Bowers is planning on coming back this year. I think the goal is that's why you have surgery on a bye week. You know, that way he can come back for the SEC championship game in the playoffs um, Mm -hmm. if you make it that far. So I think Georgia just needs to develop some other guys. Clearly, there's other really, really good tight ends on that roster. Yeah. Georgia Georgia will be favored against all of those teams. Even though it's a tough stretch, they will still be favored against all of those teams. Right. Utah beats Cal 34 to 14, moved to 5 and 1 ahead of a big matchup for them this weekend. Um, let's see. Illinois beat Maryland 27-24. Bit of a shocker yeah. there. Illinois has not had a great year, but 
good win for them. Penn State crushed UMass 63 to 0. More on them later, obviously. Florida beat South Carolina mm-hmm. 41 to 39. Bit of a comeback here for Florida. This was a yeah. sneaky good win. This was actually a really big win. I for for people that don't pay attention, um Florida's preseason win total was five and a half. Florida is current Florida currently is five and two. Like Florida is definitely going over. They're definitely going bowling. Florida, if you told Florida fans, hey, going into the Georgia week, you will be five and two with 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 all of it out there. They take that. They take that every single time. I think they're gonna I think they're gonna knock off one one of the teams ahead of them. I think they get either LSU, Missouri, or Florida State in those last three weeks of the season. I think they pick one of them off. I really do. I, it's a it's a physical football team. And Graham Mertz, for as much fun as we have poked at him, it has kind of worked there. He had a big-time late touchdown pass to Ricky Pearsall, who's a really good receiver as well, mm-hmm. that we don't really talk about. I was really impressed. I Florida's sneaky impressive. They are. They're growing. They're kind of building. They're finding it a little bit as a team. They've had some bad losses, understandably, but I think by the end of the season, like they're going to get, they have a home game. Florida State has to go to the swamp. I think that's going to be a close game. I think that will be really fun. Um, so, yeah, I think Florida has a lot of it out there. There's, they, they've had a successful year already, and there's still a lot of meat on the bone for them. They also play Arkansas this year, which is a fun matchup that you never see in the SEC, right? Because of the way the divisions are set up. So, uh, South Carolina tough road ahead of them they're going to have to win four of their remaining games to go bowling they go to mizzou to texas a&m jacksonville state vanderbilt kentucky and then close with clemson so probably looking at a five and seven season and 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 people will get mad at shane beamer if that's if that happens but he's still done a pretty good job i think and i mean down years happen especially when you're building a program like that up they got really crushed in the transport portal i think maybe more than what people realize yes. um yeah they've had a lot of guys leave yeah and it's tough i mean the the downside of, of of florida having a surprising year is that someone has to lose those games too for florida to be five and two and south connell was one of the casual, casualties this year yeah we it, we play we it's a brutal sport that we all pay attention to and mm-hmm. Um, yeah, South Carolina wins that game. You know, suddenly you're feeling way different about South Carolina, way different about Florida. Yeah. Um, and you know, one play, it, you know, a, a coin flip, you know, goes Florida's way. Right. And suddenly, yeah, we view Florida a lot differently than we view South Carolina. It was, it was a really good game. Big win for Florida, no doubt. Another SEC game that was a one score differential and leaves you feeling quite a bit different about both teams. Tennessee beats Texas A&M 20 to 13. No. Solid win. Tennessee is not who people expected them to be. They're not out there throwing the ball all over the yard. Joe Milton in this game has 100 passing yards on four and a half yards per attempt. That is nothing right. special. But the defense is good, and they can run the yeah. ball, Ashton. Tennessee is – is they're sneaky. Tennessee is just, just hanging in there. They go to Tuscaloosa this week, a game that we're going to talk a, a lot more about. Yeah. This was a – okay – this was a huge letdown week for Tennessee. The week before you go to Tuscaloosa with AM, a really talented, hungry roster coming into your place. This is a game that Tennessee fans thought they could easily lose in the preseason. Like that one just stuck out to you, and they didn't. And I don't care if it was ugly. I don't care if they didn't throw for many yards. That's that's tough. The week before you play Alabama to go out and beat a really a, a really, really talented AM team, I think is difficult. I think it's hard to do. So I have a lot of respect for Tennessee. You're right. Tennessee is not what they were last year on offense. That's just like, that's, that's a fact at this point. We don't have to argue that really um, anymore. Yeah. They, they've definitely regressed, but their defensive line is really good. They really get after the quarterback. They're physical. Like they're, they run the ball pretty well. I think you mentioned that already. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this weekend, man. Like this is going to be an exciting matchup. Tennessee needed to win the AM game to set themselves up for Alabama. Yeah, it's still all, all on the table for Tennessee. If Tennessee wins out, I you hate to even say that, but if Tennessee wins out their playoff team, like they really Absolutely. are, they win the SEC. Yeah. It's all still out there for Tennessee. And we have them ranked at 19 or whatever. Like we're not, I don't think quite a yeah, we're not appreciating it um quite yet, what Tennessee can still do. 
Max Johnson, by the way, is just not quite as good as Connor Wigman. There's just nothing, nothing more to it than well, that. He's just not quite, quite as good as as I thought he might be. Um, what, which is rough. Do you have anything to say? Like I, I follow message boards a, a, a bit, probably <laughs> too much, probably too much. Text exhaustion. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I am on tech now and then. Yeah, now and then I do go. Um, it do we okay? That number starting to look a little bit smaller for Jimbo. Like, like they'll pay it. Those guys will absolutely pay it. I'm serious. I'm, I was uh, not there two weeks ago, but they've lost back to back games. And I'm like, they're serious about that, man. They're not going not to that, let that $72 million buyout or whatever it is, hold them back. I'm serious. Yeah. He could be gone. If, if they lose a couple of more games, it's become imminent. It's not, is it rational? I'm not saying it's rational. But yeah. like, who cares? Like A and M doesn't care. Like they want to win. They want to win now. It's it's not that the number is looking smaller. It's just that the the resolve to fix this is growing, <laughs> and Texas A and M has yeah. the pockets to handle something like that. So it's out there. It's it's definitely not not an impossibility. Virginia Tech gets a big win against Wake Forest, thirty to thirteen. Um, kind of a weird season there for both of those programs. Oklahoma State beats Kansas 39 to 32. Comes out morning of the game that uh Jalen Daniels can't play. So it's Jason Bean, who's a solid backup, had big numbers in this game, also threw two interceptions. And Oklahoma State, uh, I can't figure out if they're good or not, but they they get another <laughs> big win. There's two good teams in the Big 12, and everyone else is just kind of a mixture. It's it's very yeah. weird and hard to figure out, uh, which makes watching the Big 12 fun, honestly. Another Oklahoma big, State, Oklahoma yeah. State came back from the dead. Just real quick on that. Like we yeah. had we had written Oklahoma State off. They were gone. Like we were yeah. done with them as a team. And I mean, they're four and two now. They've had a couple of big wins in a row. They beat both the Kansas teams, who we think are pretty good teams. Kansas State and Kansas are pretty good football teams. Oklahoma State a month ago lost 33 to 7 against South Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> South Alabama beat Oklahoma State 33 to 7 and to rebound the way they have is impressive. I I'm not sure if they're any good or not. Like I I can't figure that out either, but what they've done in the last two weeks is impressive. They can they can beat someone else still. Like like this yeah. could be a decent Oklahoma State team. Yeah, speaking of rebounding in the Big 12, TCU lost their last two games to West Virginia and Iowa State. Then they come out and beat BYU 44 to 11. Um, I I don't even know what to say. They, okay. So he started here. They started a new quarterback. Josh Hoover gets his first start. And apparently Chandler Morris's backups are just really good every time because last year when he got hurt, Max Duggan came out and was a Heisman finalist this year. They bench him for Josh Hoover and he comes out and throws for four thirty nine and four touchdowns. So apparently TCU found something there. I did not see it coming. Um, I was on the wrong end of both of these games in the locks and both of them were due to quarterback shenanigans largely that I did not see coming. So, well, yeah, the, the, the Oklahoma state one, I guess I kind of could have seen coming. Now the whole BYU TCU line made no sense to me last week. I'll just put that one out there. I yeah. somehow refrained from putting it in, into the locks, even though, man, I wanted to, I absolutely wanted to jump all over BYU. It made no, that line made no sense to me. And and honestly, this game makes no sense to me. Like that did that is not what I have seen from TCU so far. Right. And that's not what I've seen from BYU so far either. That's right. a BYU team that went on the road and beat Arkansas in their place. It makes no sense to me at all. 44 to 11. It wasn't competitive. Like this was yeah. a blowout from early on. Yeah, whatever. Good for TCU, I guess. That's part of the reason we love college football. It doesn't make sense. Um true. Speaking of Vegas and their lines, they absolutely nailed this one. Washington beats Oregon 36 to 33. Great yeah. game. This is, I just said we love college football because it's weird and it doesn't make sense. This is actually why we love college football because of games like this. Ashton, what were your thoughts on this game? Okay, watched a ton of it, obviously. Game of the weekend. Let's not let's not bury the lead. I think both teams are really good. I think both teams are are excellent. Um, I thought both quarterbacks played well. I know that Penix is getting a lot more love than than Bo Nix is. I thought I thought 
I would take Bo Nix. Like, I, I think they both played really well. They were both excellent quarterbacks. Now, Penix, he had some more incompletions, and he did throw the one. He threw, a, yeah, he threw an interception, whatever. He kind of short-armed a fourth down throw throw two and 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 Bo Nix did that twice and he short armed a fourth down throw that you just you can't do and that's yeah. frustrating to see I, I don't really want to get into the whole fourth down thing everyone there's a lot of people that seem to have issues with it Oregon's a, Oregon's an aggressive team like they're going they're going to continue doing that I'll, I, I'll tell you that just because they lost this game does not mean that Oregon is going to change who they are they come out they score touchdowns they'll probably go for two and they're probably going to go Go for a fourth down, and yeah, good for them. They they had yeah. a fourth down towards the end of, towards the end of the game. Um, with it was a well, I think it was fourth and three, fourth and yeah. two and a half, fourth and Something three. Like that. Right. If that was if the right call, that, the game the game's <laughs> over if they make yes. it. The game is over. The game is absolutely over if they convert that. And yeah, they're like it was me and you just last weekend that were crushing that was crushing Jimbo Jimbo Fisher for punting for you know on a on a fourth and short. So we have to give the guy credit for going for it. He went for the win. It, it was a fantastic game. I, I think both teams are good. Like, yeah. I think there's going to be a rematch between these two teams in the Pac-12 championship, and the winner goes to the playoff. Like, I still yeah. think there's – we get to see these two teams again. I think I'm excited about it. Obviously, it's really hard to predict that because just weird stuff happens, but it does feel like these are clearly the two best teams in the Pac-12, and whoever wins, like, that Pac-12 championship game, if it's these two teams – they should go to the playoff. Like that's what it feels like to me. Unless, unless there's just mass yeah. chaos between then, between now and then. Um. Oh, by the way, on the fourth down thing, it's just the okay. He admitted, uh, Landing admitted, he maybe should have taken the field goal at the end of the first half. That's fine, whatever. The the last one, the fourth and two or whatever it was, where you have a chance to end the game. Yeah. The reason people knock those decisions, I think, the, the reason that scene is so controversial is if you don't make it. If you don't make it, you immediately see the you immediately see the downside because oh now the mm-hmm. other team has the ball with better field position. Whereas if you punt it there, you don't see the downside of that right away because it takes a while. Well, they have to make a drive and then they, right. and then they end up scoring and, and you don't think about oh well maybe they should have gone for another fourth down. The game could be over. You don't see the immediate negative results of it not working out when you go for it or when you punt it. And, and so I think that's why people, they just play the results. Like no matter what yeah. happens, people play the results. And, and I'm sorry, like you go for that 10 times out of 10, you got to mm-hmm. trust your fifth year senior quarterback to make that simple little throw. And he just happened to miss it. And more often than not, Bo Nix is going to make that throw. And then we're talking about Oregon going to Washington and winning a great game. And right. Yeah. Right. This was a great game between two great teams. And I don't think there's a, like, I'm not, I'm not, I wouldn't look on either one of these teams any less than I did before this game. And I might view both of them as better than I did before. Yeah. I mean, that's a fair point. I, I do think the element of Oregon going on the road was key in this game. Like, like, so I had Oregon as one of my locks um, at um, plus three. Right. And yeah, maybe, I don't know if you call it a bad beat or not. I got a push, right. There was a missed right. field goal. It, it is what it is. Um, Oregon, to me, dominated large chunks of this second half, especially. I know they led for some of the first half, but Oregon's defense played, I thought, really, really well in the second half. I, I mean, if this is a neutral site game, like for, for like say they say they rematch, you know, in a potential championship game in Vegas, neutral site, right? I mean, the line's probably, I don't know, Oregon or maybe Oregon by one or pick them. Like it's that's I mean, the line does I don't in my opinion, the line doesn't really change you know, a whole lot. Like we always kind of factor that three to four points in for home, you know, home field in college. And and I think that probably plays like, I think that just kind of plays out. I think both teams were what we thought they were. So yeah, no agreement. I actually liked the aggressiveness from Lanning. I, I mean, that's who he is, I guess. And maybe it's because, because I'm used to it from his time at Georgia. Like he always has been that guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Good teams. Washington also, Washington reminds me of what Tennessee was last year. Um, Tennessee's offense from a year ago with elite NFL receivers and a quarterback who maybe is not going to be a future Hall of Famer in the NFL, but he's a great distributor, very accurate, and does excellent in system. Like really, really talented thrower of the football is is Penick. So I don't know. I just kind of got a little bit of yeah. Maybe it's how the offense runs some of the some of the stuff that they do. Um, yeah, with the receivers out wide i i really enjoyed watching this all this this washington offense yeah i think they have a real chance at making the playoff i really do 
Yeah. Kalen DeBoer is going to look really good coaching Alabama next year after Nick Saban retires. <laughs> I just kidding. Don't no, don't even go there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, unnecessary. Um, by the way, if you ever consider betting on the Heisman, which is a fool's errand, but if you ever think right. you should, now is an excellent time to buy really low on Bo Nix because Oregon could absolutely win out and that would vault him way up there. So his his odds dropped dramatically after this loss. Um, probably more than they should have. So just something to think about. Yeah, I like that. Okay. We go on down through the day. Iowa beats Wisconsin 15 to 6. This is the most Iowa win ever. Um just looking at the box score, Deacon Hill, 37 <laughs> passing yards, 2.6 yards per attempt. Uh, hey, they beat Wisconsin. They won. I the have game. something. I have something to say. Like <laughs> Iowa, this is who, who Iowa is. I'm not going to bash on the lack of passing yards. I think there, there's too many people out there doing it, and I have done it for large chunks of of this of this season, right? And even this past off season, they completed six passes again for the second week in a row. <laughs> that, that is what it is. That is what it is. I'm not going to bash on that anymore. They had 37 passing yards. That just is what it is. I was six and one. Yeah. Iowa is. Iowa has – they have a very manageable schedule. Yes. We'll just say that. They, yes. they do not have world beaters to round out their schedule. <laughs> Rutgers is probably a pretty good team, and they have to go at Nebraska. I don't – yeah, whatever. On um, Yeah, like I guess Thanksgiving weekend or whatever, like rivalry stuff. What, ah, I don't care. Iowa could absolutely be there at the end. Like I was probably going to win the Big Ten West. The offense is what it is. Let it go. That defense is really good. Um, we we both had Iowa um, in our locks. This was a lock agreement and yep. a comfortable winner. Like we never really were in question here. So yeah, I absolutely. Let's let's just let's just be okay with what Iowa is. How many games can they win while not scoring twenty five points? Like it's become kind of fun. They because they can win a lot of games. They're they're actually yeah. really good. I'm I'm gonna just I'm gonna double down. Iowa is pretty good. They don't have a good offense, but they're a pretty good football team. Yeah, it's just I don't really disagree with anything you said there. I mean, they they are what they are. They're not enjoyable to watch, but they have an excellent no. defense and special teams, and that's fine. And that'll get it done in the Big Ten West. Yeah, for one more year um, until the divisions <laughs> go away, and it's not going to work good Dude, after that. <laughs> I can't wait to watch these Pac-12 teams that are moving to the Big Ten play oh. Iowa and and these and Minnesota and oh man, it's just going to be something else. <laughs> mm. They're just the clash of styles. We get to anyway, see Washington, Washington go to Iowa. Wouldn't that be oh, great? Or USC go to yes. Kansas? Yeah, that'd be rock. Oh, can't wait. All right, Pitt beat Louisville. Um, completely unhinged, thirty-eight to twenty-one. Makes no sense, but that's college mm-hmm. football. Clear letdown spot for Louisville, which is a thing apparently for Jeff Brown. Whenever he beats top ten teams, they they're like zero and five the next week or something. So, mm. just weird. Pitt gets you knew Pitt had one of these in him. Even in a year where they're trash, but they they finally they got their upset um, out of the way. Um, LSU beats Auburn forty eight to eighteen. They have a really good offense, and and like I said, like we said in the preview, Auburn didn't they they just can't take advantage of LSU's weakness. Um, right, not much of a quarterback um, there to talk about. Kansas State beat Texas Tech thirty eight to twenty one. Good solid win for them. Kind of a weird year for the for Kansas State. The the storyline here was that they started playing Avery Johnson, the freshman quarterback, who runs like a four three forty or something ridiculous. He ran for five touchdowns in this game, so that that'll get something done in the Big Twelve, especially when they're looking for a, the third best team to rise up. So maybe that can be Kansas State. Air Force yeah. beats Wyoming thirty four to twenty seven. I just mentioned this. Uh, this is two really good G five teams. Air Force has a chance to go New Year's New Year's Six bowl game. Um, they mm-hmm. are the best team in the state of Colorado, by the way. So just something to keep Ooh. an eye on. Oh, absolutely. Don't even. I mean, you're right. You're I'm not. Yeah, I'm not arguing. Not at all. That's just that's a hot take. No one talks about Air Force quietly six and ranked this week. Ranked. Arizona. They're good. Those two Pullman Mm -hmm. and beats Washington State 44 to six. Yeah. Washington State was ranked. uh, That's going to be done now. Um. Arizona's got this freshman quarterback, Fafita. 
Tony Fafita. Mm -hmm. no, sorry, did. Noah. Noah Fafita. Yeah. yeah. No touchdowns or picks this game, but 342 yards, and he's just fun to watch. He he looked really good against USC last week, too. He did. Jed Fish is doing good things at Arizona. Um, yeah. Mizzou goes to Kentucky and beats Kentucky 38 to 21. Kind of a slow start uh, for Mizzou, but they figured it out and pulled away. Um, I don't know that I have a whole lot to say here. Um, Mizzou's offensive coordinator, by the way, Kirby Moore is the brother of Kellen Moore. Um, uh, and uh, wouldn't be surprised if he finds himself a pretty nice job this offseason. So just something that, to keep that, 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 that offense. And in, in particular, what they've done with like with Brady cook at the quarterback who was not good to start this year. And then, like, Luther Burden at receiver, I mean, former yes. five-star. The dude's a stud. He's just really, really good. He's going to be a first-team All-SEC guy. He's one of the best receivers that we're not talking about. I think he has – I mean, he's legitimate NFL upside. He's excellent. Missouri's offense is good. Like, this was a big win for them on the road at Kentucky. People struggled there. Georgia struggled there in years past. Florida, we saw them struggle there, obviously. Big-time win for Missouri. They were clearly the better team there. Yeah. North Carolina beats Miami 41 to 31 impressive showing from the heels. Um, Drake may was decent. I mean, 273 yards and four touchdowns. That's pretty good, but 235 rushing yards for this team. That's really impressive. Um, I don't think we've seen just a ton of that out of North Carolina this year, but they, their offense is legit and their defense is clearly better than was last year and they're six and zero. So great job of the Tar Heels. There's a there's a chance they win the ACC. Um, they don't have to play Florida State in the regular season. I think we probably see them in the ACC championship game. Yeah, I I agree. They they're they're the undefeated team that no one really talks about yet. Um, everyone else has kind of been weeded out, and we're not really talking about about North Carolina enough. Yeah, Duke goes and beats North Carolina State twenty four to three. This is without mm -hmm. Riley Leonard, mm -hmm. um, Henry Beelin, the backup completed four passes. <laughs> And they still beat NC State by three scores. So very impressive job by Duke. Mike Elko, very good coach. Um, yeah, we might be saying his name or about a bigger job this uh, this offseason. Oregon State beats UCLA 36 to 24. Good win for them. They moved to six and one on the year. <sighs> yeah. I it's easy to get a little bit down on UCLA. Dante Moore hasn't exactly been he, – he's kind of going through that freshman wall right now. Three three interceptions in this game. UCLA still has a good defense. Oregon mm -hmm. State is just better right now. I don't know that they're quite quite as complete as I thought maybe they would be this season. Right. But they're 6-1 right. and one and they're beating teams. So props to Oregon State for that. They definitely have a chance to upset what I thought would like be like potential rematch between Oregon and Washington. So Oregon State plays Oregon and Washington the last two weeks of the regular season. They could be the one that knocks the apple cart over. Like yeah. Oregon State could be kind of the surprise out there. Yep. All right. One last game Saturday night. Notre Dame beats USC 48 to 20. Um, ending up USC's kind of <laughs> timidly undefeated season so far. Um, I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but yeah, big win for Notre Dame. A lot to talk about here, honestly. Ashton, what are your what are your takeaways as the neutral observer? Okay, so USC, we we knew that their schedule was not very good to start, right? And they had like a lot of cupcakes early on. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, or at least it seemed like that. They they didn't have just a a super tough schedule out of the gate. Arizona's a good football team, like from last week, I know they they really struggle with them. Whatever that, I mean, that's a pretty decent win, I guess. We expected more out of USC. Like that's just the yeah. long and short of it. We expected the the not just the defense to be better, but offensive line. I think we needed them to be better. People were viewing USC as a potential playoff team. There was a lot of buzz for that. I mean, Caleb Williams is fantastic, but they got straight up bullied up front, like like on both sides. I think that's what stuck out to me. Um, yeah, they they weren't they weren't tough. Like like Notre Dame was by far the better team. You 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 go you play this game wherever you want, neutral site wherever. Notre Dame was the better football team, and they won. So yeah, I was really impressed, honestly, with Notre Dame. I they after a brutal um, four game stretch, you're right to to get off the mat and to beat USC and beat them up. I thought it was really impressive. So yeah, I I think Notre Dame was the more complete team, and it showed. Yeah, there was no doubt.
in some ways it's kind of hard to make huge sweeping proclamations after this game like i mean the turnover battle was five to zero caleb williams threw three interceptions in the game for the first time in his career and usc also lost two fumbles one of which was returned for a touchdown you right. notre dame also had a kick return for a touchdown yep. notre dame had 251 total yards 126 passing and 125 rushing like they weren't all that impressive. They had 5.1 yards per play. Their offense didn't look fixed at all to me. They did finish drives, but their defense was just insane. I And it's not mm-hmm. even necessarily the turnovers, which could be pretty random. They they were just constantly in Caleb Williams' face. He, he was able to yeah. pull out a magic trick every once in a while and escape the rush, but most of the time he was not. They, did, they, they sacked him six times. They had 11 tackles for the loss. USC had 4.1 yards per play, which is the lowest of any team ever coached by Lincoln Riley. Um, Yeah, I I just – I took USC to cover in this game. And (laughs) honestly, the reason was because I didn't think Notre Dame's offense would be able to do anything special, and they didn't do anything special, and they still won this game by four touchdowns. And it's because their defense was – I mean, that's maybe the most impressive defense – I have, I've seen Notre Dame play in a long time. Well, okay. So you mentioned the, the six sacks for Notre Dame. They also had 11 tackles for loss. You mentioned both of those stats. USC had no sacks and one tackle for loss. Yeah. One. So like you're, you're seeing that much, like the, just the difference of penetration from the defensive line. Like mm-hmm. that was impressive. Um, Notre Dame's corners held up pretty well like yeah. not bad i was really impressed with that I, I yeah i know was it um xavier watts that had i think what he had like the two interceptions the one i think he returned you know pretty far like is it is it ben morrison number 20 is that who number yeah. number 20 is is for you guys i've been impressed with him almost all year that guy yeah. is i think he's he's a really good cornerback and usc for for yeah for saying what we said um it's not like usc has good receivers like they really do. Like Mario Williams, uh, singer, uh, Brendan Rice is good. Zachariah Branch played in this game too. Um, like they've got good talent at receiver. And I like Notre Dame straight up shut them down. I I was impressed. I was really impressed for Notre Dame. I, I'm with you. Maybe we're not gonna make just a, a grand sweeping statement like, ooh, you know, USC's absolutely trash. USC with that, with that much talent on the edges could beat some of the teams like like they hang on i'm just pulling up their schedule now just to see who all they play so they do it's so they rough. have utah <laughs> this week and then they have washington and then oregon at oregon and then ucla yeah. so they play four ranked teams in their last five games they have a very backloaded schedule like they can beat either washington or oregon like this is one of the teams where say washington goes to sc caleb william gets hot gets hot like that's a that's a game that usc can still win so yeah they're not a playoff team i i think people were right to we kind of dropped usc in the rankings week by week we kind of saw and, and kind of started to drop them i think that was that was appropriate i think mm-hmm. um yeah i the offensive line's not good like their offensive line their defensive yeah. lines are not good they're not very good they're kind of like colorado a little bit in that way so yeah, I, I don't have a whole lot other than that. They're gonna they're gonna lose multiple games still this year. Multiple. Yeah, I would I would tend to think so. It, it last year, a lot of people talked about their offensive line not being very good, but it was actually their defense that was the main problem last year, and their right. offensive line was solid. Right. right. In this game, I kind of felt like their defense was okay and their mm-hmm. and their offensive line was terrible. Um Barry Alexander actually did a pretty good job. He was disrupting things in the middle and making Notre Dame try to figure other ways to beat them. Like I said, only 125 rushing yards for Notre Dame. And if you'd have told me they're going to score 48 points, I would have expected a 300 yard rushing game or something like that. Um, Right. Yeah. I mean, the main, my main thing with Notre Dame is they were able to finish drives and anytime USC sort of kind of made it close, they responded Um, a long pass to Chris Tyree was Tyree was a big deal. Jadarian Price, who is like their third best running back and hasn't gotten enough touches just because there's so many running backs and there's not enough to go around. He was the one who had the kickoff return, 99 yards, um, right after mm-hmm. USC had scored a touchdown and, and was making right. it feel a little, just a little uncomfortable. And then he just kind of ended it. 
um, right before the kick return, I said, it feels like we need one more touchdown. Um, and that's what happened. Right. Um, I, yeah, I'm not convinced Notre Dame is a great offensive team or anything resembling that, but their defense is probably even better than I thought. Um, yeah. USC's longest pass was 21 yards. So that'll do yeah. it. That's how you beat USC right that, there. That's impressive though. Like, I think like being able to get that much pressure to where he doesn't have time to look downfield. Caleb Williams is an NFL quarterback. Like he's yes. going to go number one overall. And like, that was the worst game of his career. That was yeah. like, he was not very good. And it was because like, he had a lot of pressure. He was getting hit a lot. That's what, like, you remember back to last year, that's why, like, he didn't like playing against Utah. Like, they beat him up. Like, they they got it. They sacked him a bunch. They hit him a bunch more. He didn't enjoy that a whole lot. Like, I think that, yeah, that's, there's no question that that is the the best way to rattle a really good quarterback and maybe make up for the, the talent deficit that, I mean, USC's receivers are going to be better than almost every team's corners. They're really good receivers. And if you can, you can, yeah, you can disrupt that that timing for them. I think that yeah, it's absolutely the, the blueprint um, to beat USC. They have real concerns. Notre Dame, on the other hand, like Notre Dame, they're six and two right now. They have to go to Clemson yet, but you can win the rest of your games. Like there's a world where where Notre Dame's ten and two. Yeah, the, their big goals are are off the table, but it can still be a successful season. Right. But they have to win out to do it. Um, I think if they win another game, it'll. It'll still feel uh, – and by the way, going to Clemson, that's not going to be easy at all. I wouldn't be shocked if Clemson's no, no. favored in that game. Um, Probably. Yeah, you kind of have to win that game to to be able to look back and say it was a success, successful season. Otherwise, it'll always mm-hmm. be a little disappointing going 9-3. and three. 